Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is uh, Pastor Zhang. Yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to pronounce, you know, my first name. I know, I know, but it's okay. Just Zhang, Zhang, Zheng, it's fine. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'd like to welcome you to have a worship this morning. Uh, our opening hymn is 345. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. But the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, who will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sin to God and Father. Most merciful God, Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgiveness to you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of the world, I therefore forgive you all your sin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. 
the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and dependence, gracious Lord. of our heart by your gracious visitation. For you lives and reigns with your Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. from the Old Testament, Daniel, chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. At that time shall arise Michael, the great prince who has charge of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never been since there was a nation till that time. But at that time your people shall be delivered, everyone whose name shall be writ found written in the book, and many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall wake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky above, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle from today is from Hebrews chapter 10, verses 11 through 25. Every priest stands daily at his service, offering repeatedly the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, 
He sat down at the right hand of God, waiting from that time until his enemies should be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering he has perfected for all time those who are being sacrificed. The Holy Spirit also bears witness to us, for after saying, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts and write them on their minds. Then he adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, any brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with a pure water. Let us hold fast the confessions of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet people, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another all and all the more as you see the day drawing near. This is the word of the Lord. said to him, Look, teacher, what wonderful stones and what wonderful buildings. And Jesus said to him, Do you see these great buildings? There will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. And as he sat on the mountain of Olives opposite to the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign when all these things are about to be accomplished? And Jesus began to say to them, See, that no one leads you astray. Many will come in many names, saying, I am he, and they will lead many astray. And when you hear of the wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. These are but the beginning of the first pains. But be on your guard, for they will deliver you over to council, and you will be beaten in synagogues, and you will stand before governors and kings for many sake to be a witness before them. And the gospel must be proclaimed to the all nations. And when they bring you to trial and deliver you over, do not be anxious beforehand what you are to say. But say whatever is given you in that hour, for it is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. And brother will deliver brother over to death, and the father his child, and children will rise against the parents and have them put to death, and you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. This is Gospel of the Lord. <coughs> Please be seated. Please join the hymn uh, 345. <coughs> Thank you. 
Peace of God will be, uh, be with us in the name of the, our region, uh, Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Uh, a few years ago, I read a, a book uh, whose wrote uh, Kim Okyo, a famous uh, Korean uh, writer, talk about his life as immigrant in America. Uh, I wanted to share a uh, few things which caught my attention. He said that he left Korea, fed up with living in Korea. Uh, he has lived in America uh, close to 30 years, and his book was light and candid reflection on his life in America. Before leaving Korea, he knew America as a paradise. Are you agree that America is a paradise? <laughs> no? Sometimes. 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 <laughs> and he said it was, it is a really was. But his uh, uh, point throughout the book uh, was that the actual living was very tough. A tough life in the paradise. How does that sound? <laughs> the general living condition uh, of America exceed those of Korea. Americans are polite, right? Bright, <laughs> gentle, kind. <laughs> However, to keep uh, in paradise, both husband and wife have to work all day. Paradise without time for family dinner. This is the way it goes. There seem to be so many rules, regulation, and law. They are all meant to be good, but one can be easily overwhelmed if trying to abide by them. Breaking up any, any of them with the consequence. Uh, the following are some uh, things he shared. On the weekend, he wanted to rest because he tired. But since he bought a big house, he had to cut the grass every Saturday. <laughs> Not that he enjoyed it, but because he didn't want to report by neighbors. He learned a uh, calling someone past 8 p.m. could be invading privacy. Sometimes he and his wife wanted to leave their children at home, but that could cause some serious trouble with uh, the law. So they have to take them with or hire a babysitter, right? Uh, if cost uh, money. Going to restaurant, unlike Korea, you have to wait to be escorted by a waitress. Again, you have to wait until the waitress takes your orders. When your dinner is over, you cannot leave right away because your waitress is busy with other customers. That how things are here, reflecting on this difference the writer said, America is uncomfortable paradise. <laughs> Are you agree? So why then did he leave Korea? He said he had left it because Korea was like hell. <laughs> or hell, where the people don't complain about bumping shoulder or stepping other toes in a subway train, people talk aloud, cutting line in the traffic or pushing in common, talking too much 
is often seen on the street, he concluded that Korea is a hell, but a relaxed place. How about you? Have you tasted a restful paradise and comfort here on earth? To some people, life on this side can be heavenly with some inconvenience. To others, life can be hellish with some easy moment. Nowhere on this earth there's no perfect paradise. That is why we put our hope in coming of Jesus Christ and kingdom of God. Uh, today Bible passage discusses the sign regarding the end of the world. In our Old Testament, reading Daniel, uh, write about the end of the time. Daniel chapter 12. At that time shall arise Michael, the great prince who has charge of your people, and there shall be a time of trouble, such as never has been since there was a nation till a time. But at that time, your people shall be delivered. Everyone whose name shall be found written the book. Our gospel reading began to emphasize the sign of Christ's second coming. In fact, Jesus talked about some things, some of these signs in Mark chapter 13, which we hear a few uh, minutes ago. In a sermon, in this sermon, uh, often called the Oliver uh, Discourse, because it is uh, delivered on the mountain of uh, Olivers. Jesus gave the disciple and us look uh, into the future. The sermon spoke to uh, both the destruction of the temple by the Romans in 70 AD and the destruction to come when Christ returned. Jesus' sermon focused attention on preparedness, readiness to suffer, and trust. Jesus began his disciple of the events to come by emphasizing many people we claim to be him. All of them will deceive the people. At the time of Christ's return draw near, was and rumors of wars will escalate in number of intensity or force. This conflict will involve both nation state and ethnic groups as well. Natural disasters will gain more worldwide attention. One of the signs Jesus talked about is the destruction of the temple. The destruction of the temple was the result of misuse by its leaders. The false church, false teachers represented the religious cultism and the result from man's search for spiritual meaning outside of world, God's world and his world. Man's self-interest often lead to social upheavals. Natural disaster often occur when the eschatological, ecological system is upset by things such as pollution. These signs are constantly happening, so Jesus told the disciples not to see them as sign of the final judgment. He told them these signs are precursors to the end, the times. When Jesus deferred the pain of childbirth, he was referring to the frequency of the sign of the end time. When a woman is uh, uh, in a labor, her uh, contradictions are uh, infrequent at first, become more frequent as the baby comes close to entering the world. 
In the same way, the sign of the end, uh, the end of time will be infrequent uh, at first, but will escalate to mass and tragic proportions just before Christ's return. God's answer to trouble is truth. He wanted us to trust Him in times of this trouble, especially as the second coming draws closer. Faith in the link between heaven and earth. This world is a place where our faith will be defined and where our hope will last on our future heavenly home, one that will never perish or be destroyed. Our life is a full of troubles. Paradise, but inconvenience. Hell, sometimes each moment. The things that people wanted to cling to will not endure, but trust of Jesus Christ will endure. Stand firm through this troubled time with the confidence that comes from the blood of Jesus. His very blood and body is what our Lord offers us today to partake of at the altar today in communion. Our Lord personally comes to us to keep us in the faith until He returns. A process that He began at our baptism and continues when we confess our sin and partake of the body and the blood. This is the assurance that is mentioned in Hebrew chapter 10. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. This passage from Mark's Gospel was not meant to make us worry about our future. It is written to offer comfort to the first century believers who were struggling to make sense of their world and their lives. We have same struggles as this passage gives us comfort and peace as well. The destruction of the temple is not the end. It was beginning. It was not about dismantling God. It was about new beginning in faith. A building may be destroyed, but the place where God dwells cannot be destroyed because we in our own bodies are the temple of God made so by His word, baptism, and communion. Sometimes Korean church say Amen. <coughs> amen. 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 Yes. Secured by the, these things in saving faith, we will rise again from the dead, just as Jesus did first Easter never to die again. We will be in world made perfect with our Lord and the saints that have preceded us eternally. This future of this congregation is a good example of what I'm talking about. I know that you have many challenges or our church <coughs> have many challenges during the last two few years because of the COVID situation. And you also have a discussion about your future, especially calling processing of new pastor. It's my hope 
that we can take comfort in the knowledge that although your physical makeup may be challenging, your spiritual makeup will remain the same, especially if God lives in your heart and mind. God also prepared and worked in advance for your new pastor as well. Our hope is in Christ's return, which will be the main event of the end of times. We must be careful not to be deceived by the world event. Instead, we must look forward to the greatest event in history, Christ's return for His church. Amen. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Please stand, joining the confess, confessing our common Christian faith in the world of Apostle Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and the seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Gathering hymn number 336. And we will sing the original melody. I double checked 924, and there's an extra line that, that will not fit with these words. So just turn to 336 and we'll do that now.
At this time, we'll accept our offerings. If the ushers will come forward. throughout the world and keep us ready at all times for your son glorious return lead us to proclaim with a joy his coming to the ends of the earth lord in your mercy Amen. bless all pastors and ministers that they may preach the pure doctrine of god's saving word which will never pass away Give face to the all who hear, that in Christ they may have the peace that passes all understanding. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Uphold all authority, especially the President and Congregates of the United States, the Governors and the Registrature of the State and all Judges. Graciously enable them to read according to your will, and for our good. Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks, Holy Lord, for the fruit of the earth provided by your hand. Supply the needs of all who grow, process, and distribute our food, and move us to share this bountiful gift with our neighbors in their time of need. Lord, in your mercy. Behold the sick and inform the dying and all in need, especially we commend it into your hand, your servant. Jean Wickers, uh, she'll be going uh, into surgery this week. She'll be having two surgeries on her back, uh, two days apart. She needs our prayers for a healthy and speedy recovery. Grant them healing of the body and patient to endure their afflictions. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Give repentance and faith to all who approach the altar of Christ's gracious invitation, that they may find favor in your eyes and receive his true body and blood for the salvation of their souls. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Grant this and all the petitions of God for the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. 
the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly God, right and salutary, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. In the communion of all your saints gathered into the one body of your Son, we have surrounded us with so great a cloud of witness that we encouraged by your faith and the strength by your fellowship may run with perseverance the race that is set before us, and together with them receive the crown of the glory that does not fade away. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we loud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, begotten Son into our place to be our sin and our sa to be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all abrading sacrifice of His body and blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, o Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as by those two in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the end of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the realm, his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you all, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord, Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and having given thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it. This is my body, which is given to you, to this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, after supper, he took the cup, and having given thanks, gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is my blood of new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord death until he comes. Amen. Come to the Lord Jesus. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray the Lord's Prayer. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. 